Hello everyone and welcome to this video on 2.5D or near 3D workflows using AI generated 2D layers from uh, Kubrick in Assimilate Live FX Studio. Now what is 2.5D or near 3D? It's basically a set of rotoscoped and in-painted 2D layers that are arranged on the z-axis in depth and this way we can create a realistic looking parallax uh, when projecting the content onto our LED volume. The advantage of this kind of workflow is threefold. First of all, the content is really easily generated using an AI engine like Kubrick. Of course, nothing stops you from creating your own content by rotoscoping existing media either. Second, since these workflows do not rely on rendering 3D geometry, they only require very lightweight hardware. I'm recording this tutorial on a simple MacBook for example. And lastly, this workflow allows for super low latency with overall motion to photon delays of around 3 frames in live effects. This gives a much greater freedom to DOPs as to how freely they can move with the camera inside the volume. And of course, any of this does not only work with still image layers like shown in this video, but also video layers of any resolution, frame rate or codec. So, how do we do this in LiveFX? It's very straightforward. Here we are in our project and I have the Kubrick layers loaded. If we quickly check them out, here's the background with the sky and the moon. Here is the middle ground with the mountains and here is the foreground with the spaceship. And we also have a shot that we could place on our ceiling LED wall if we had one. Uh, but we don't, so we won't. Back to the construct tab. What we first want to do is create a filler to have a blank canvas to work on. I'll choose the 100% color bars because this way you can easily spot when the projection isn't right whatsoever and these uh, super saturated colors pop up on your LED volume. Now the thing is um, the resolution of our blank canvas that we want to work on should be the same resolution as the resolution of our LED wall. Now by default um, the filler will take the same resolution as the timeline, which currently does not equal the resolution of our LED wall. But we can easily change that. So let's double click our color frame. Here we go. And jump into the Live Fix menu. And here in the media menu, we can dial in a new resolution. If we quickly pop up the stage manager and select our stage here, our LED wall, we can see it has a resolution of 4096 times 2304 pixels. Very odd resolution, but I'll go with it. Going to the media menu, we can change the resolution of our color frame node. And we can do that by just clicking in here, popping up the calculator, and now instead of typing off the value of the screen, we can also just click it to put it into the calculator. There we go. Same for the height. And now our color frame, our color bars have the same resolution as our LED wall here. Okay, let's collapse this and uh, add our layers in. So I'll start with the background layer, here we go, then the middle ground and then the foreground, here we go. Now what we want to do is arrange these layers on image planes in 3D space behind the LED volume nicely separated from each other to create the parallax effect. Before we can do that we first need to uh, link the camera tracking in. How do we do that? We go to the camera menu and as we can see everything is grayed out here. No camera tracking, no active camera whatsoever. What to do? Well, go to the tools menu, open up the live links menu and in here we have our real sense tracker which I have because I'm in my home office and don't have uh, a super high-end tracking solution right now, but the RealSense will do for this tutorial. And as you can see, we have tracking info coming in, and all I have to do is hit the apply button over here to link it to our shot camera here. Now, as you can see, I have a little tilt and roll here because my tracker is not properly mounted. Uh, that's okay, I can simply cancel it out by going to the manual section here, pop up the tilt parameter and put in tilt value here. Now obviously I have doubled it as you can see so I need to invert it. Here we go and same for the roll. Click into the roll parameter, click 
the roll parameter over here. Now I've doubled it and now I've canceled it out. Perfect. Since the Intel RealSense also does not really have an idea about where it is in 3D space, uh, I have to tell it manually that it is 6 meters back, please, and uh, 1.5 meters high. All right, this looks good. Very well. Now what we have to do is put our layers here onto image planes in 3D space. And the way to do that is to select the layer. Let me disable the other two real quick. Select the background layer, go to plugins and choose the plane to wall node here. Apply it on layer. And as you can see, now we're looking at a great deal of blue color, mainly because the plane to wall node does not have a clue as to which LED wall it is projecting to and where the camera is. So let's tell it. We can simply link it to the stage manager. And as you can see, now it knows, oh, I'm projecting to the PRG wall export, which is this wall here. And if we go over to the projection tab, we can also tell it link to shot camera. So it follows whatever uh, our camera is doing here and knows what the camera is doing more specifically. Now, uh, as you can see, we don't really see it because our image plane is here at the world origin and there it is not really that useful. So go to the plane to wall menu projection tab and let's first move the wall back of uh, the image plane back behind the wall somewhere here and actually let's move it to something like minus 12 because it should go to the very back right as you can see it is still not that useful here we need to scale up our plane a little bit like so and maybe also move it up a little bit like so now, as you can see, um, we're not covering the entire volume. And luckily, we chose uh, color bars at the beginning, so we can see it right away. Uh, why is that? Well, mainly because our uh, color bar shot has a resolution of the LED wall, but uh, our layer here is not covering the entire shot. So the thing to do is go to the canvas menu and just scale it up a little until it fits the entire shot. Something like this. And now it's also filled appropriately here. We can move it up and down a little bit. Well, actually, we don't need to do that. We should move the plane up and down as we need to. Something like this. All right, and now it's uh, simply a rinse and repeat with the other layers. So here is the middle ground. And again, we'll add the plane to wall plugin, apply on layer, tell it to link to stage manager, tell it to link to shot camera. Now push it back. Let's push this one to minus eight. Scale it up and move it up a little. And here, same issue. Uh, the uh, canvas the layer is not covering the entire frame area so let's quickly scale this up a little bit just so the frame outline here covers the entire frame and now let's position our middle ground yeah this doesn't look too bad okay and last but not least let's take care of the foreground with the spaceship again add the plane to wall node link it to stage manager link it to shot camera push it back to uh, maybe minus four. Oh, that is not enough to go back a little bit further. Yep, that's just behind the LED volume. That's good. Uh, scale it up again and move it up a little. So there's our spaceship. Very nice. Now, if I move my camera in XYZ, you can see we are getting some parallax effect here. Not very big, um, I can actually amplify that a little bit just for demonstration purposes. Let me go to the camera menu, go to the link option here that opens up the animation editor and here we have X and Y position and I'll just put a factor on it just for demonstration purposes. I'll amplify the camera movement five times here and now if I move my camera you can see what a nice parallax we're getting here. Now, as you can see, we still have this gap here at the bottom of the LED volume. And again, we need to simply 
to scale up the layout to cover the entire frame, like so. And now back to the plane to wall node controls. We can actually move this up a little bit if we wanted to. Okay. We can this way obviously position each and every element uh, the way we like, right? So we can actually move this up a little bit higher or the mountains a little bit lower, something like this. Yeah, that's nice. And obviously if our DOP says, hey, can we maybe move the moon more to the center of the volume because I want it to, you know, be right above the spacecraft. Sure, we can do that. Uh, just select the back plane and move the moon over on the x-axis. Here we go. Done. Um, the same way, we can also uh, color grade each plate individually. Like, let's say we want the sky to be a little bit more blue, colder. Well, we can do that. Just like that. All right. Uh, we can select the middle ground and maybe make it a little bit brighter or a little bit warmer. Same for the foreground. A little bit warmer, a little bit brighter, something like this. Um, and of course we can grade the overall image as well. So I just can create another layer. Um, this layer uh, is uh, just called color. And now I can, for instance, go to the curves and affect the entire image. Or go to the vectors, load lookup tables, key something and replace it with something else. Um, or, yeah, simply dial in more contrast if I wanted to, etc, etc. Um, lots of things I can do here. After all, we're working in a complete color grading and finishing system for live camera signals. Um, okay, so that's that. Um, you might wonder, hey, uh, I'm not seeing the camera frustum on the LED wall. Well, frankly, you don't need to see a camera frustum because as you can see, we are affecting the entire screen. So wherever the camera is looking, it doesn't matter, um, the, the screen will be there. However, if you still want to see um, the frustum, then you can simply do this by creating a layer. What we call this Frustum. We go to Plugins and we choose the Frustum to Wall node here. We enable the Matte option and then apply it to the selected layer. Now, what has happened? Let's take a quick look at our node tree. So here's our source shot, the color bars, and here is the three textures that we're feeding onto that shot through the plane to wall plugins three times. And now we've added the frustum to wall plugin. Selecting that. Um, again, this plugin we have to tell, hey, link to shot camera. So it knows where the camera is and at what angle it looks at the LED volume. And link to stage manager. And from that, as you can see, it can create an alpha channel of the frustum. And this alpha channel we are using on our frustum layer here. Go to the fill menu, you can see down here in the matte field, that is where our frustum to wall plugin goes and the alpha channel is enabled. So if we now put a grade onto this layer, it will respect the alpha being fed from the frustum to wall node onto this layer into the matte field. So let me just dial in the grade here. Okay. So now we can see let me hit play. Now we can see the frustum moving. Um, now obviously uh, this might not be the look we want for the frustum. Uh, we can as well go to the film menu, select the matte field here or the matte tab, either one works, um, and invert the alpha. And now we're color grading the outer frustum. And the inner frustum stays exactly as it is. Or we can simply duplicate this layer, just alt drag it, like such and on this layer we do not invert the alpha so now on this layer we can grade the inner frustum and on this layer we can grade the outer frustum very easily all right and lastly let me quickly disable these two layers they are a bit distracting um, and this one as well um, maybe the DOP will ask you hey you know this is all great but there's no action going on on the LED volume. Uh, can we, you know, have some action in it? 
And there's an easy way to do that uh, in this particular case. Uh, you can simply create a layer, and I'll call this Fog. Go to the Film Map menu, uh, right-click, choose Import, and uh, here I have a, a VFX shot, Fog shot in uh, front of uh, black background. So I can just drop this into the Fill field, the upper field, okay? And now I have Fog here in front of everything. Now, as I said, it is shot in front of black, um, so I will need to use a blend mode either here or I can switch to the fill tab over here in the layer stack and choose uh, screen for instance. Okay. Now here again, need to scale up the canvas a little bit. Yep, something like that. Um, and obviously, we would also want it to be projected correctly in uh, 3D space here. So we would go to plugins and add the plane to wall node here, link to stage manager, link to shot camera, and uh, push it back to, let's say, uh, should be in front of the spacecraft, I would think. Spacecraft 4.7, fog is 4.8, no, 4.6. This works great. Let's scale it up. And move it up a little bit and here's our fog well that is pretty fantastic as you can see the fog jumps a little because our shot length is just 23 frames long we can obviously just make this longer Here we go. and even more I can of course color grade the fog now I can make it brighter or less bright, or dial in some contrast. However I see fit. Maybe it's a sandstorm, so let's make it a little bit yellow. Okay. So, this works really nicely. And this way you can comp in not only textures, you could also comp in certain plugins. You know, create a layer, go to plugins, uh, LiveFX ships with all these matchbox shaders that you can use to um, comp in clouds or snow or rain or you know literally anything you can think of okay that's it for this tutorial hope this was useful to you and see you next time bye